Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Mass Effect Andromeda. I'm so sorry that it's taken me a week to get a new video out, but there's a good explanation for that. Uh, I've had some audio issues, some massive audio issues that actually caused me to have to take my computer in and get re-imaged. Boo. But before that happened, I got to do a data backup, which was like, ooh, yay. Uh, but when I was recording this video, I didn't realize that I was having audio issues until after the fact. So thankfully, the game audio is still working, but unfortunately, the commentary audio had to be scrapped. So I'm here, after the fact, recording a post-playing commentary. So right now, I'm recording this after the I've already played the game. So this is actually blind footage, but it's after the fact recording for commentary. So I'm sorry about that. Right now, I'm just kind of going around talking about how I'm going to be taking it a bit slower. And I'm going to be looking around a lot more and really sort of investigating the environment because it's blind at this point. So we're going to talk to this person. All right. What happened? To who? To whom? And your goddamn father. Sorry, my face is tired from dealing with everything. And right now, I just want to know what happened with Alec. Not how he died. I pulled those logs. What happened with Pathfinder? Can't remember what I'm saying here. Something like... It's very obvious what happened with the Pathfinder. In the moment, it saved my life. But it seems my father meant for me to get the role, eventually. It isn't hereditary. If we wanted an inbred monarchy, we could have left half our gene stock back home. <sighs> Not home. The Milky Way. This is home. This mess. We don't have a lot of options, Ryder. Maybe you'll prove your father right. After 14 months of failed colonization, forgive me if I don't hold my breath. So we're going to go into like a long series of just learning more about her and her, uh, you know, perspective, I suppose. Um, she's not happy. She's not a happy lady. There's also this strange technology. Has anyone studied that? We've tried. Not me. The brains in research. They're supposed to know their business. The current excuse? The tech we dug up on Mars was more advanced, but it was plug and go. The tech here thinks different? I don't know. We've mostly avoided it. And from what the Hyperion logs say about Alec, maybe that's good. How do you fit into the Nexus leadership? I oversee the actual settlement effort. As the number of outposts is currently less than ideal, my influence is limited. As Tan is quick to remind me. Left a perfectly adequate career as a chief officer. Provincial capital, too. Only a new galaxy could pull me away. And here we are, idling. She's not a happy lady. She's very unhappy. She's not happy with the status of what's going on here. You called my father Alec. No one does that. A lot of us joined the initiative because of his vision. What he shared of it, anyway. Were you friends, or...? I'm not your new mother, if that's what you're asking. Or his friend. He hated that I didn't use his title. But no one's a pathfinder until they've path-found something. Much like a colonial director without colonies. I just remember when I was recording this, I was really offended by that. By... Oh, no one's a pathfinder until they've path found something. That doesn't make any sense because somebody has to be the one to find the path. Otherwise, you'd be the path founder. Doesn't that make sense? I don't know. I'm like caressing her face with my mouse because I'm like, you're stressing out way too much about stuff that doesn't matter. Because ultimately, I'm the pathfinder. So regardless of what you think, my job is still to be a pathfinder that's still my job even though you don't want to call me pathfinder it's like it's not your decision there must be some kind of plan for call me whatever you want aliens we can't have been that naive we expected life not an enemy that refuses to talk they don't attack they disinfect 
We're nothing until we're bacteria. Sorry, 14 months and you stoop to poetry. That's how bad it is. Not sure who started it, but we're calling them Ket. Kandros will know more. Maybe too much. You don't trust him? I trust him to defend us. I do not trust a rising military influence in a supposedly civilian initiative. We came here to make history, Ryder. Not repeat it. Ugh, oh, goddamn poetry. So, I'm coming to the conclusion that this woman has, like, is leaning towards good on the moral compass, but it's not happening in her time frame, and she's, like, stressed out as hell. So, I think she's a good guy. I think she's on our side. I think that she just is stubborn and a bit bigoted in a way, or maybe not bigoted, but, like, just discriminatory. Or just, like, one of those hard-ass people that's just like, I only respect you if you put out results. So I'm hoping that we can prove her wrong at some point. Because I don't like the way that she talks to us. You've had no colony successes in over a year? How many tries is that? Less than you'd think. The scourge, spoiled worlds, exiles, hostiles... We can't just plop down an outpost and expect picket fences. We need the Pathfinder and Sam to scout, evaluate, and inspire. The initiative promised a goal. Andromeda has not cooperated. And if it had? Beautiful, utopian horseshit. Colonies that produce and support each other. The Nexus as Citadel, not headed by Tan, or even me. Like I said, she's just... She's a hard ass. She's a go getter. She wants results. She wants to see the new world. Excuse me, Director Addison. Ryder? It's Pathfinder. Ryder, we're starving here. If we don't get a foundation of outposts to feed the initiative, we might as well be 600 years dead. Alec promised a lot. None of it panned out. That's what you're up against. Why people won't trust you. Why I don't trust you. Prove me wrong. The problem is, is that I've not promised anything. And apparently my, I'm estranged from my father. And I'm just, oh, I'm commenting here. Look how close they're standing. Like the proximity between them, like the sexual tension is just unmistakable. We're both a couple of ladies who love us some eyeshadow, who are just at odds with each other, but in the end, perhaps form a bond. But anyway... Uh, I'm just not sure how I feel about Director Addison quite yet. I mean, she's, she's afraid. She's, she's clearly afraid. All right, moving on. And Docking she's hesitant hatch. and she's disappointed. Um, also her makeup is terrible. Uh, purple eyeshadow, pink blush, pink lipstick with green eyes. I mean, it looks cool with the purple eyeshadow, but like... That blush is just abysmal. It's just so hard to look at, really. I'm going to comment on every makeup that I see. I'm a lady type person. I notice those things. So here we're just going around the Citadel. Well, the Nexus, excuse me. The, the new Neo Citadel, right? Uh, just trying to see what we can find. Just looking around at some of the graphics and some of the little mini interactions that are going on. Uh, we can shop. Finally. Like, that's what I've been looking for. Weapons and stuff. I got you covered. Use the console to take a look through what I got. It'd be a lot easier if I weren't missing half my stock. And I think here I make the decision to go with uh, being sort of a nice guy. Because they've been stuck here. They've had nobody it. come Shop in now. Shop you drop. Here I come. That's fine. Hey, wait. Please don't drop anything you bought from me, okay? Tam would have my head if anything happened to you on my account. We're paying full price. And I'm, I'm, I'm a little overwhelmed here because it's a whole new UI system. And I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. And like, you know, just my eyes rolled back in my head. And 
I'm not sure what to do with it quite yet, but I'm just kind of browsing. Uh, but yeah, we want to pay full price because the Nexus, I mean, shit, they've had a, a civilian militia being formed and there's like, there was like a resistance and they need all the money and all the help they can get. Of course, this is all like economics in a vacuum because who are they going to sell to each other? Money is worthless in this kind of instance because you're in the middle of nowhere with no way to replenish the current stock you have because they were thinking that the arcs were never going to show up. So all they have is what they already have. So I'm really quite surprised that they even have a merchant or something. I'm not sure how many people we have aboard. Uh, and here, here I'm just checking to make sure that I'm all up to date on all my gear and all my special stuff and my skills and, you know, just kind of browsing the menu a little bit. Uh, but yeah, I'm really quite surprised that they have like sort of a merchant system going on because you would think in this sort of situation that you pool your resources for the highest probability of surviving instead of arbitrarily selling and buying with the same few dollars that you have lying around. And here I'm just like, oh yeah, I forgot that in Mass Effect you can talk to the merchant or you can actually look at the thing in front of it. Just looking around, wondering what this lady is, you know, looking at on her iPad, probably playing Flappy Bird or something. I'm just trying to, like, check it out and be like, yo, what are you looking at? But I walk away anyway. Uh, and here I think I'm getting a little sketched out because I'm looking around to make sure there's nobody watching so that I can look at this computer footage. And I'm like, oh, shit, the girl's right there, but we have a, we have a chest. We have some loot. So we got to grab that. We got a new gun. Looks like a sniper rifle. I don't think we can use it, but it's pretty cool. Coolant cells, shield focusing module. Pretty cool, pretty cool. She's not watching us. She's got her back turned to us. She's busy. Uh, but that other lady is sort of watching us. And so we hide for a minute because we're like, oh, yeah, we're not doing anything. We're just sitting here. We're looking at the chest. We're just, you know, routine Routine adjustments, it's fine. What are you looking at? Stop looking at me. Why are you looking at me? Get back to work. Why are you looking at me? Seriously. Just get back to your clipboard. All right, now she's actually back to her clipboard, so we're going to look at the security footage. And here we go. We got some stuff to read. Lots of stuff to read. So we've got to Tyran Kandros <clears throat> from Jaren Tan. Tyran Kandros was that uh, Turian that we've already encountered. From the Andromeda Initiative, Kandros, as you're aware, there was a mutiny aboard the Nexus during your absence. Events escalated quickly, but we believed it began with a fire in hydroponics and theft in the armory. Motivations for the uprising vary. Mob mentality was certainly a factor, but for the leaders, uh, including your predecessor, formerly uh, former security director Sloan Kelly, it was a conscious betrayal. Um, there have been a perfunctory attempts to catalog and address the damages caused by Sloan's people during the uprising. Supplies stolen, equipment broken, things of that nature. But I was hoping the militia could step in and drop an official report. It's imperative. We know what we're working with if we're going to survive. Director Tan. <sighs> now, Director Tan. Gosh, all these new names. I'm having trouble remembering who that is. Uh, to Jaren Tan, director of the Drama Initiative from Tyran Kandros, I need my people focused on defending the station, not taking an inventory. If you really need militia oversight, I'll get Sergeant Nels to look at it. That said, it was my understanding the Exiles were more Calyx's people than Sloan's. Isn't he the one who started the mutiny? So it looks like there's some uh, confusion between the military ruler uh, to Tyran. Calyx Corvanus may have started it, but Sloan made her allegiances clear. I know she held you in high regard, but I hope that you can be impartial when it comes to this task. Okay. So it looks like Sloan is sort of a rogue turned bad guy. Sloan Kelly's not who I thought she was. There won't be a problem, Kandros. I like his attitude. He's got a very garris feel. Good. Then you won't object to ascending a small discreet reconnaissance team to find out where Sloan and the exiles might have gone. When do we get colonial efforts up and running? Blah, blah, blah. 
Uh, Trails Cold. Found what looks like abandoned camps in the Pfeiffer system, but none with living inhabitants, inhabitants, only graveyards. The conspirator, Irida, was among the dead, but not Sloane Kelly. The Pfeiffer system. The Michelle Pfeiffer system. And I think we go back to look at it just to confirm. Yeah, we're confirming that it was the Pfeiffer system. So if we come up against the Pfeiffer system and we're out, you know, out and about running errands and stuff, then we want to make sure we keep an eye on that for sure. Nobody saw us looking at the security footage, which is good. So we're just going to come out and look at some more toxic. stuff. What if they store oxygen in porous tissue like Quiro's rockfish? I still reckon they have breather gear stowed in that armor. Perhaps both. Life is infinitely adaptable, as our expedition proves. Okay, we're going to go talk to Professor Herrick. Is that what his name is? Can't really see. A Salarian, a Turian, and a Sari. You must be the Wonderful. You and your Sam are exactly what we need. Thanks, Mr... Professor Herrick. My colleagues and I will work with your Sam and the data you gather to solve Andromeda's scientific mysteries. Hmm. What are your qualifications, sir? What fields do you study? Here it's in the life sciences. I do planetary geology, oceanography, rocks and runoff. Our Adonis is space and math ways. Not that we've had much to study, with everyone cooped up for 14 months. But your data on the Scourge flows like poetry. Now we can better advise on repairing the damage it caused. And maybe Addison will give us a real workspace. Who can think with all this racket? So I'm thinking to myself, like, he's a professor. Why isn't he a doctor? Finder. We're going to talk We've to the doctor. Trouble. Anything I can help with? Perhaps. I discharged an away team to get readings from a section of the Scourge that was behaving anomalously. They haven't reported in for some time, and sensors can't locate their shuttle. I sent them out there good, dedicated people. I fear what might have happened to them. We need her to stay focused. Your work is important. Don't lose sight of that. When I'm out there, I'll see if I can find them. Their friends and family will want to know what's happened. And I... I need to know. We need her to stay focused. She's the only one with a fucking doctorate on board, apparently. A scientist without a doctorate, like, in charge. That's just terrifying. I'm si I think I'm sitting here, like, m wondering, like, why. Hi, Pathfinder. Want to hit some rocks for science? Try and stop me. I think this is sort of like a training type thing. But do we do it? Or do we maybe later it? I don't remember. We're going to do it. Absolutely. What do you need? Sam and I used your scans and made a VI for geophysics surveys. Beta builds on the console there. Test it out in the field, and I'll wrangle you a consultant's bonus from Director Addison. How's that sound? Sounds good to me. Give me those side quests. Patch notes. Geophysics beta build. Streamlined interface with Omni tool. Blah, blah, blah. Customized Sam handshake <laughs> protocols. Yeah, I forgot about that. I'm, I'm going through and reading them, I think. Attuned voice recognition to recognize both aluminum and aluminium. That's classic. Some of these flavor text things are just absolutely just fantastic. I think I'm lolling here about the handshake protocols. And we're selecting it and unselecting it to be <laughs> followed. I don't know why I'm playing around with a console that's sparking. But, you know, we do what we, ha we, do what we can on the, uh, on the Nexus here. We're going to talk to Professor Herrick again, I think, since it's allowing us to. Pathfinder, those bioscans are superb. Could you gather more for our comparative conservation effort? That sounds interesting. What conservation effort? Ah, my thesis is on the console there. Broad strokes, we're comparing and preserving organisms from both galaxies. If you donate more bioscans and samples to the catalog, I can get you a finder's fee. Tempted? Tempted. <laughs> well, of course we're tempted. We're going to take all of the money that's inside of this area and we're going to take it and take it with us. If 
final proposals, by definition, invasive species in Andromeda, our inevitable footprint must la be laid carefully. We must preserve anything we replace. The Helios Cluster presents an unexpected challenge. We arrived with seed archives and DNA banks to ensure preservation of the biodiversity of the Milky Way, but this cluster is scarred by the scourge, and its unique flora and fauna are threatened by its turbulence. That, too, requires conservation. So we're going to the Pfeiffer system and the Helios cluster so far for our side quests. And we're going to talk to the doc again, just to be sure. The beauty of the cosmos the unfolds in your planet scans, Pathfinder. But there is more they can do. Do you have something in mind, Doctor? Plans for a school are underway to inspire a new generation of young minds. I want to craft a model of the cluster for them, accurate and splendid from your data. My prototype is on that console. Add more scans to improve it, and I will share my educational budget with you. And my thanks. Hey, educational budget. I'll take it, sister friend. Cluster model. Uh, three initial system models will be completed by next week, which will see our place in the world. Orbital vari variance for the Nexus. It must be corrected as construction corrects our orientation. A reminder. Our daughters will not know stasis, the 600 years sleeping. They will be born of Andromeda and whatever is unfolding. This cluster in its chaos was not welcoming. But it matters less what we suffer here more what we bring. I remember I first time I read this, read this, I thought this was really powerful. Our daughters will not know stasis, the 600 years sleeping. That gave me chills. I don't know what it is. I love I love poetry in general, but it's almost like a proclamation. Like they're st uh, stating against having to allow the next generation to do that. It makes me wonder. I mean, it must have really affected them a lot in order to like make this very poetic and artistic proclamation. So, I thought that was pretty neat. Pathfinder, no time for our beer yet. This place is a mess. Security is it. Let's call it strained. I can believe it. Nexus is running on empty. Not just that. A lot of the exiles were security. Everyone was trained and armed for Frontier. We know Ket are dangerous, and now we have to worry about our people too. No idea where they went, but they left mad. Hmm, let's not write them off, I think, as where I go. They were frustrated. If they just wanted to kill, they could have fought to the last here. Apparently, we're the big hope for everyone. Not the Hyperion showing. Just us. I'm with you. It's just... a lot. I think I go, like, don't worry. We'll get it back to spec. We'll shape them up. We'll help them fly right. Oh. What do I say here? We'll get it back to spec, right? <laughs> I think I'm saying, like, don't try and talk to me right is now. Here, as long as we're here, we have a job to do. Double down crisis mode. I can do that. We can do that. Ready and willing, Pathfinder. Hell yeah. Liam, Liam's an okay dude, but I think that he's just a little too informal with me. And we're going to go talk to a Turian. And here is where I freak out, because I'm like, holy shit, this is it's a female right. Turian. It's not fair. What's wrong? Oh my, you're... So it's true. A Pathfinder has found us. There's hope at last. Maybe you could help. You're impartial. This whole thing has gotten so political. My husband, he's locked up and slated for exile for a crime he didn't commit. Mm, I think I asked her what, what was the crime. We don't want to judge, you know, first of all, straight out the gate. I'm sitting here geeking out about a female Turian and just how amazing she looks and beautiful and... Almost like a flower. 
kind of like the back of her head. Yeah, I'm pointing, <laughs> uh, saying something like she looks like a flower with like a blossom on the back of her head. With these piercing green eyes. First female Turian that's been shown in Mass Effect, I'm pretty sure. What exactly was he convicted of? They don't exile you for petty theft. Well, maybe this bunch would. They say it's murder. They're calling him the first murderer in Andromeda, but the dead man was his friend. He wouldn't have. There are witnesses and evidence, but it's all circumstantial. At worst, it was an accident. His name is Nilkin Rensis. He could give you the details if you were willing to speak with him. Please. His name is Robert Paulson. I'd be happy to. Oh, thank you. I'm sure the jailer will allow you a visit. Please, tell Milken I love him. I'm just, I'm still geeking out at how beautiful she looks. I'm looking at the back of her head like, oh my god, the design on this is so amazing. Look at those like reptilian elements. And we have like draconic elements. And it's so soft and feminine. And I'll, I watch a lot of Face Off. I don't know about you guys, but that show is incredible. Uh, I really love art-based reality competition shows. <laughs> I know that look. The others bent your ear, did they? Something like that? You get used to it. Just focus on being a Pathfinder. Can't argue with results, though they'll try. Anyway, welcome to Militia HQ. Excuse the mess. This office fields militia work, Nexus security, and looking for the Turian Ark. What's the word on the Turian Ark? Scattered readings. Some indicate the Natanus was destroyed, others that people are alive. Who knows? If you need anything, come see me, even if it's just a vent. Here we go. We got some more info dump stuff, so we're going to learn more about the aliens that we fought. The Ket. I think I'm talking here about how he looks badass, too, and... I can see his cute little lavender tongue there in his mouth, and I just want to hug him and be his friend, and I really like Turians. Can you tell? <laughs> what do you know about the enemies we've encountered? The Ket. We usually see them on worlds with those alien structures. The Ket don't take kindly to anyone studying them. Not sure why. They don't talk to us. Every time we cross paths, there's a fight or they take prisoners. Why? What do they want? No one knows, but I've seen their weaponry and what they do to those prisoners. I want them a long, long way from the Nexus. What brought you out here to Andromeda? I was tired of being the good one. The good one? The Kandros family is old military. There were expectations, you know. Then my sister became a sculptor and cousin Nyreen went pirate on Omega. Everyone was proud that I stayed in service. But I kept wondering, when do I get my adventure? Jen Garson's dream was so grand, so gutsy, I had to be part of it. You talk like you weren't part of the leadership. How did you end up commanding the militia? I was escorting a prospecting team on some moon when those Ket found us. They penned us like cattle for experiments. I managed to get loose, snatched a gun, and freed the others. By the time we killed the bastards and headed back to war in the Nexus, everyone looked at me like I was in charge. That sounds familiar. The militia grew from there. Funny, once the heat is on, all kinds of people rise to the top. Are the other Turians managing okay? So-so. We're not good at sitting around in a crisis. Service before self gets drummed into us at boot camp. That's probably why so many of us are in the militia. We like to earn our citizenship, whatever galaxy we're in. But it's hard to focus with our arc missing. It's rough out there. I might need backup if you can spare the people. I have strike teams specializing in assault and extraction. If you need serious firepower, my Apex teams have you covered. In fact, I could give you authority to dispatch them. It'll cut down their response time. Thank you. Our current ops are on the terminal. See if there's anything that could use a shot where it counts. Bye, Kandros. Duty calls. You and me both, Pathfinder. Okay, I think we really sit here and, and talk about how... We really like Kandros. We like Tyr and Kandros, and that how we started, we ended the conversation a little bit farther apart than we did with the other lady. 
Uh, but we're going to go ahead and end the episode now. And I'll be back in the next one. Next two episodes, unfortunately, lost the audio for us. We'll have to do a, a redo on the commentary. But I hope that's all right. And I'll see you guys in the next episode. Thanks a lot.